with that, I will say that uh, I am excited for today's show. Kim, I, th- this series of shows, this is, uh, again, something that I'm really intrigued with. There are so many transactions and trading partners of Canada and the U.S. being very large trading partners. But Canada and the rest of the world, whether it's Canadian imports, exports, all kinds of things going on, there's a lot of things happening on on the Canadian side of things. So uh, anything you want to start off with here from your sure. perspective? I'd love to. Thank you, Andy. It's so much fun to be here and officially kind of kicking off our secret that we have the trade, uh, Simply Trade A, and I'm co-hosting with you. So that's very exciting. Uh, thank you so much to you and Lalo for giving us this opportunity. Um, we've done a little, a couple on CARM, a little informal ones to see how that would go. So very happy to be here today, not talking about that four-letter word, but we have different problems to tackle, which are in some ways just as daunting. Um, and so I'll, I'll talk about Will in a second here. But I was at a conference this week, and Ambassador Cohen, uh, U.S. Ambassador to Canada, talked a lot about the importance of our relationship, to your point, Andy, and the amount of trade that continues to go across the border every single day um, is really still, uh, a sig- I wouldn't say significant, like critical to both of our economies. And we peel back and look at even states, 35 states, really, we are your biggest customer. So um, it's really imperative that we work so closely together and, you know, keep all of our friendships and our good connections as we start to think about 2026 with USMCA uh, renegotiations, because it's critical for our two countries, including our good friends in Mexico, to keep that intact and make sure that we're all um, we're all doing well together. That's that North American thing. You know, I was trying to get, it's like, it's tough enough to try and get, get something going here in the U S it's tough enough in Canada. Now we're going to herd cats and try and get Canada, U S and Mexico all on the, on the same page. Well, the good news is we've done it before, uh, with our free trade agreement, right? So, um, that's all good. Obviously it's going to be a little different this time because we're going to have potentially different leaders for sure in two of the countries. Um, well, maybe three at the, by the time the thing starts really in renegotiating. So that will be interesting. But we're here to talk about forced labor today, uh, Canadian style. So um, I, I'm introducing Will to uh, Pellerin to the conversation today. Will has been so gracious to help uh, IE Canada, my volunteer job. Um, with our members over many years at various summits. So um, I thought Will would be the perfect person to talk about forced labor today because he has lots of experience. um, And certainly we've had a busy last few weeks getting many clients in to meet the require uh, the mandated requirement of May 31st filing, which we'll talk about a little bit in a second. Um, so, Will, in Canada, we're a little bit different. We, we don't have the big um, compliment that you do, uh, Andy, in the U.S. with uh, trade lawyers. We have a very finite special group. So, Will is one of these amazing folks and uh, happy to introduce him to, to uh, the podcast here and potentially a lot of your listeners because after today, they might need Will to help them with some forced labor stuff because it is very unique in Canada. Sounds good. And I will say, Will, welcome to the show. Uh, Before we get too far along in this is that where are you located right now? Are you in the Toronto area? Uh, I'm in Ottawa. So um, we, I'm at the Macmillan. So I'm a partner in the international trade group at uh, Macmillan um, here in Canada. Macmillan's a national business law firm. We're located everywhere in Canada, but most of our international trade team, which is a for, for the Canadian market, quite a big trade team uh, is located here in Ottawa. So, so this new legislation that you're talking about there, uh, Kim, that you, yeah. uh, S, what'd you call it? S number two? 211, but there's actually an official name. Will's probably going to be the one that's going to rattle off the long name. I feel it's like a two sentence name of the actual uh, legislation, but we refer to it as that. So I don't know if Will, if you want to give a little bit of a framework of, of what the bill is. Sure. Um, it really doesn't have a snappy acronym. Um, I blame the parliamentarians. The, the name of the bill is Fighting Against Forced Labor and Child Labor in Supply Chains Act. Uh, just rolls off the tongue, really. Uh, so we'll call it either the Supply Chains Act or the Modern Slavery Act or Bill S-211, uh, which was kind of its uh, its numbering. All those things are, are effectively the same thing. Um, and so this, this became law Jan 1st of this year. And what it does is, is really two things, and the main thing that we're going to talk about right now is it creates this reporting obligation for 
companies in Canada, but also international businesses that do any type of business in Canada to file these forced labor reports um, that basically describe how entities are addressing forced labor or child labor in their supply chain. So this is very similar to for those that, that are in the UK or Australia or even California has a, a bit of a requirement similar. Um, it's a transparency bill. So you describe what it is that you're doing to fight forced labor or child labor. There's no diligence piece to that, though. So what I mean by that is you don't actually need to be doing anything to fight forced labor or child labor. You just have to report on what it is you are doing. So um, thousands of companies have now filed these reports um, by Friday last week. This was a massive undertaking by trade lawyers, trade consultants, and everyone else in the Canadian market to try to get everyone up and running and preparing these reports. Um, we were assisting dozens upon dozens of, of major multinational companies and you know local Canadian businesses getting uh, getting themselves organized and filed. So these have to be filed with the government, uploaded onto a portal. They have to be posted on the company's website. And they had to be approved by the board of directors of the company themselves. And so in some cases, we were, you know, chasing down multinational boards um, out, you know, in Korea or in Japan or in the United States, trying to get these folks to, to sign off on these forced labor reports um, and educating them. So massive undertaking, massive kudos to all those that, that got it done in time. Um, and uh, frankly, really happy that it's. Almost over. And let me make a point here again, you know, with our listeners, folks, you know, yeah, you're having to do a report uh, for the, this law, as it appears. But what's the intent here? The intent is drilling in to say, do you have somebody or a product that you're buying from somebody that is using, um, you know, the forced labor, child labor or doing something nefarious that they shouldn't be doing? Uh, that this is a way, and in the laws, the whole intent here is not to make it a bureaucratic nightmare for you, but it should be one of those things. And I think you said, uh, hit it, Will. This is something that you ought to be proud as a company to say, look at what we've done. And hey, you know what? We did find a problem, but we're jumping on it. So it's like that, you know, we're going to get that fixed and be on that quicker than a duck on a jumping on a June bug going after it. It's like, hey, we're going to get this fixed and resolve the issue and move on. So, yeah, we're proud of what we not only of what we've done, but hey, we did uncover some things. Turn it around and make it a positive. We discovered some things that have been there all along and we're doing something about it. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, there we had some clients that were frankly, very pleased to be able to do this. And they knew that they'd look better than their competitors when they put out their report, right? So it's a competitive thing also. If you can show that you're better at having a clean supply chain than your competitor, that's a competitive advantage that you can flaunt in the market, right? So they're... they're yeah, I, I'm wondering, uh, Will, might be smart just to talk a little bit about CORE since uh, now and before border prohibition and reading the tea leaves, only because it does kind of talk about reputational risks that could happen to you in a different way. Yeah, absolutely. And this is probably one of those things that, that people don't know about the Canadian market, but that frankly has become a little bit out of control. Um, I'm going to share my own kind of personal views, which I don't do all that often as a lawyer that comes at it from a kind of neutral, objective, legal speak uh, um, commentator. But in this case, I think uh, this is an organization that, that has a mandate um, and, and they've taken it and run and probably have gone a little too far, a little too fast. So let me introduce these folks. This is the Canadian ombudsperson for Responsible Enterprise. So CORE is the acronym. Um, so the CORE is this um, organization that's set up within Global Affairs Canada. Um, it's a creature of an order of council. And so what's relevant there is there's no regulations, there's no laws, there's no statute that govern this organization at all. It's a little bit of a fly-by-night uh, organization, but it now has a large budget and, uh, and quite a large staff. And what they're doing is uh, launching investigations 
where there are complaints made by anybody in the, uh, you know, stakeholders uh, at large, uh, NGOs or the like, to investigate these allegations of, of forced labor um, internationally by Canadian businesses, including in their upstream supply chain. Um, and they have publicly announced and started investigating um, companies in the garment sector and the mining sector. And they're also um, empowered to look at the oil and gas sector. But they've launched now um, a number of investigations um, I, I was looking at it. I've, I see nine major ones right now and it's major names. Like we're talking Nike Canada, Ralph Lauren, Walmart, Hugo Boss, Diesel, Levi, Zara, Guess, and then a couple on the, uh, on the mining side, um, also. So, you know, everybody just immediately assumes oh, China's the, the cheapest source and that's where I want to go and, and all that over, you know, decades here. Now it's like, do I really want to deal with it? If you look at it holistically, um, is China really the best source? Yeah, you may get a very cheap manufactured product, but now the extra duties and taxes or the extra transportation and the extra basically compliance bureaucracy you have to deal with, uh, is it worth it? You got to take all that and add all that up and look to see it's, uh, you know, uh, go from from there. So, you know, look at other sources around the world that uh, help simplify some of that. So you don't even have to worry about it. Yeah, I, I think that I think that's right, Andy. And it's it's absolutely not just China. It, it, it's everywhere. Um, I think that the biggest takeaway that I've kind of wrapped my head around over the last little bit is that the government of Canada and other governments also, for better or for worse, expect companies to know everything that is in their product and every part of where it's from all the way to the raw material. So the government has promised new legislation by the end of the year on forced labor. And so uh, we've all been going around and trying to figure out what that will be. Um, for a while, we thought it might well be a UFLPA style reverse onus um, piece of legislation that assumes that goods from Xinjiang or other places are um, made of forced labor. We recently learned through the media that that was not the case, that that's not what they were looking at. So that leaves a couple options. Um, the first is, as Kim mentions, kind of a true diligence bill. Um, and we have had clients that are doing some consultations informally and formally with the, with the government on this. 